Welcome to the 2022-2023 school year enrollment audit and child count training. It's being held in July 2022 by the Office of Enrollment and Residency. Um, today's training will go over the enrollment audit process um, and provide uh, information and guidance on how to successfully complete the enrollment audit, um, but more detail can be found in the enrollment audit handbook. So generally speaking, the enrollment audit process consists of um, pre-audit data prep, trainings, initial documentation review, issue resolution, final appeals, and then reporting. There are uh, several important dates, but the most important um, can be found on this slide here, um, starting with October 5th when we freeze the data um, to use during the enrollment audit, um, subsequent certifications, uh, the initial documentation review, the resolution of any issues found during that time, and then any final appeals. Again, a, a complete list of these dates um, and even uh, additional dates can be found in the Enrollment Audit and Child Count Handbook. Pre-audit data preparation. So um, prior to the Enrollment Audit, LEA should be ensuring that they are completing residency verification. So collecting those forms from enrolling persons, ensuring that those documents meet all compliance requirements as outlined in the OER Handbook, um, we have hosted trainings and on the residency verification requirements. Um, those trainings can be found on the OER website. Um, LEA should be reviewing the OSSI residency verification click application so that they can find students that may not require supporting residency documents. However, um, as is always the case with um, students in the OSSI residency verification click application, just because their inclusion in that application means that we, the auditor will not be looking for supporting documents, it does not um, mean that the LEA uh, uh, is not responsible for com confirming bona fide residency. So you always want to make sure that a person is still a, a bona fide resident, um, whether they're included in that um, application or not. Um, so as you collect your residency documents, you want to start to prepare them in the form Format that we will be um, looking for them to be uploaded uh, for the e-file process. So in the March training, we went over the e-file document uploads and their 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 setup. Uh, there are two examples here. The first one is uh, when a student's documents are combined into one single PDF. So you can see it's broken up by uh, age groups, um, by last name, and then in, in the the bottom file layer, you can see that there's just a single document for each student. Each one of those PDFs would have the residency verification forms as well as any supporting document all combined. An additional way that you can do that is somewhat similar, but allows you to keep the DC residency verification forms as a separate document and then supporting documents as a separate document. And so you can see examples at the bottom here where you have three students, each with two files uploaded, one for the residency forms and one for the supporting documents. When uh, it is time for you to submit your e-files, um, you will use Box. Um, we use Box for a few years now. Um, one thing to flag is it may contain empty student level folders from the prior year, so feel free to delete those if they're no longer relevant, and you want to remove those to, to make sure that there's no confusion when the auditor goes in to review. Um, and you can begin uploading your documents starting in August. Um, it should become live at the same time that the application becomes live for the enrollment audit, and you don't want to wait till the last minute. So starting in August, you want to start to put documents in box. You can edit, remove, add, delete um, as needed up until your e-file deadline. So be sure to take advantage of that, um, of those couple of months there that you have time to do that um, and so that you can uh, make sure that everything's set up correctly and, and there's no issues when the auditor goes in to, to review. Uh, again, guidance on file formats and file sizes can be found in the handbook. And if you want to request a different file format, um, or make adjustments to the ones that we have, do email us. We will work with you and the auditor um, to see if there is an alternative that can be done. Otherwise, we'll expect it to be in the format that was uh, presented on the uh, previous slide. So, like I said, organize your folders now um, so that you can just drag and drop all those school folders into the box enrollment audit e-file folder. If you organize them now and you have them labeled and separated correctly by population, group and by um, student last name um, and by document type, um, then you can um, highlight all of them and drag and drop them into box um, rather than doing individual uploads or doing a lot of editing on the box side after you've already put them in there. 
if you're experiencing issues with uploading documents or if you're finding file or folder constraints, we've put a lot of guidance into the EACC handbook. Um, and so I would refer there first um, for any troubleshooting. And then if you still having issues, please contact us. The other thing you should be doing before the um, October 5th is setting up your POC roles and your application access. So your LEA data manager should be the responsible party for updating all POC roles in OSI system. So you want to connect with them to make sure that everyone is listed in there correctly um, and, and, and identified. In order to receive, receive application access, a user must have SLED credentials. So you can that is something that you can be doing now um, to ensure that you have SLED credentials so that when the application goes live, um, you and your staff are able to access appropriately. Um, generally, the enrollment audit POCs include an LEA data manager. We'll include an LEA enrollment audit POC, which is a lot of uh, where our communications will go to. And then there's sometimes the school enrollment audit POC. This is for multi-campus LEAs uh, that may want to restrict access to just the school level. And then there's the head of school, which is in charge of completing all of the certifications. The audit workflow schedule is something that you're going to want to take note of when the application goes live. Um, it will be uh, available in August and it will have all of your LEA specific deadlines for e-file submission, for issue resolution, for final appeals, everything. And so you want to uh, download that uh, schedule and distribute amongst your team to make sure that you don't miss any uh, deadlines. Trainings. So we also several we offer several trainings over the course of um, you know several months uh, leading up to the enrollment audit. The first was back in March with the residency verification training. Uh, the deck and the um, slides and the training video can be found on our website. It is also just a summary of what is in the OER handbook, so it's always a good reference. Um, then we complete the enrollment audit and child count training. That is what you are participating in today complete that in July. There's an accompanying handbook with a lot more detail and guidance. Uh, the enrollment audit and child count application training will be coming in August, and that will be um, training on the actual application, the functionality of it. And then lastly is a head of school training webinar. This is located in the application under the menu. Uh, it is a very short webinar. It's really just meant as a refresher because the role of certifying is, is very easy and very quick. Um, but for those that do need a reminder or for those uh, head of schools that are doing it for the first time, there is a, a training webinar in there um, as a refresher. First certification. So this is one of the most important certifications. Um, they're all important, but this one really sets off the enrollment audit um, and identifies the students that we will be reviewing um, for the for the remainder of the, the enrollment audit months. Um, it starts on October 5th, where we will take the data and freeze it. And then LEAs will get a chance to review it from October 6th to 11th and make corrections so you can still add and remove students um, if they were not correctly captured on October 5th, but we're only looking for those that were attending and receiving services as of October 5th. And then October 12th, um, that data will be complete and your head of school uh, certifies that it includes all of the relevant students. If you certify that data and it does not have all of the relevant students or there are additional students that should not be included, there are steps for amending this roster, um, but they're all um, located in the handbook um, and it can uh, involve a, a number of, of steps um, and they usually have to be completed within a certain time period. So if you needed to add a student that's within 10 business days, requires an um, OST ticket submitted. And if you want to remove a student, you have until November 25th. Again, refer to the handbook for all of the action items that you need to complete uh, in order to amend the roster after first certification. And the best way to um, uh, the best way uh, to approach this is to avoid having to amend it and making sure that your certification is accurate on the day. Initial documentation review. So this year, uh, all LEAs will be participating in the e-file submission, so we will not have in-person uh, document reviews um, for the enrollment audit, with the exception of uh, the residential student audit. 
So LEA should be uploading all residency forms and supporting documents into their um, enrollment audit folder and box by their LEA e-file deadline. And again, that's found in the audit workflow schedule um, in the application, the deadline that is specific to your LEA. Um, if you do not make this e-file deadline, it is possible that you will not be able to do a mass upload function and you would have to uh, appeal each one of these students individually in the application. So we would reject them all as a result of the initial documentation review, and you would have to appeal them all in issue resolution. Um, you really don't want to go through that. That's a lot of manual effort um, to submit documentation. So please make sure to, um, uh, to uh, submit all of your documents by your e-file directly, uh, e-file deadline. So once the documents have been submitted for by the e-file deadline, the auditors will conduct um, reviews of those documents um, by their population group. Uh, just like in past years, there's a 100% review of residency forms. We do a sampling of supporting residency documents, um, and we exclude those that are on the OSI residency verification click application list. Uh, and the a greater detail of this sampling can be found in the handbook. Um, but just to flag for everyone, we also reserve the right to review 100% of LEA documents. Um, so while we intend to do a sampling for most, if not all LEAs, there are some LEAs that we will do 100% because of prior year issues with enrollment audits or prior year issues with non-residency findings. Um, auditors will review these documents based off of DC laws, regulations, and OSI policies. These can all be found in the OER handbook. Um, if they are, if documents are found to not be compliant with these uh, laws, regulations, or policies, they'll be rejected by the auditor. When they reject them, they'll include a rejection reason, and then the LEA will be responsible for resolving that issue. Now, if they believe that the rejection was done in error, um, you know, this is an iterative process. It's meant to capture errors both by LEA, but also by auditor. Um, then they can submit the documents again during the issue resolution phase um, and, and, and argue that they were compliant. Residential audits and non-public audits are a little bit different. Um, for residential audits, while we will do the traditional, while we will do the e-file, um, process for the residency documents and supporting documents. We will, in addition, complete an in-person headcount at residential programs to ensure students that are listed as receiving residential services are in fact um, receiving those services. Um, and we'll, you can find the timeline for that uh, in the OER in the EACC handbook. In addition, auditors complete a 100% review of supporting documents for students in non-public placements. So for non-public placements, we do not do a sampling. We will just review all of them. So all of their residency verification forms, all of their supporting documents, and those should be submitted at the same time as all of the other students for your LEA. Issue resolution. So you've gone through the initial documentation review. Um, they, that can result in um, rejections from the auditor. Those are resolved during issue resolution. In addition, you will also need to make sure that you're meeting all duplicative enrollment deadlines um, and resolving them through the duplicative enrollment application. You'll also need to resolve any demographic data elements that are flagged in the enrollment audit application, and then you'll want to complete your child count questions. Um, some of these app actions have independent deadlines, and some of them need to be completed by the second certification. For example, the child count questions have to be done by the second certification, but resolving auditor residency document rejections are on their own LEA-specific timelines. So once the auditors have completed initial documentation review, you'll be able to see those results in the enrollment audit application. You will have until your issue resolution deadline, which is again, it's LEA specific and it's found in the auditor workflow, um, sorry, audit workflow schedule. Um, and you can either agree with that determination or you can um, resolve whatever the issue was um, that caused the auditor to reject the document. 
Um, if you don't respond to an auditor determination, um, specifically a rejection by the issue resolution response period, you won't be eligible to submit a final appeal. So in order to submit a final appeal, you do have to participate in this process throughout. You have to submit it on time through for initial documentation review. You have to respond during issue resolution, and then you can uh, move forward with a final appeal. If a student is added to the OSI residency verification click application after October 5th, so that is the cutoff for when we exclude them from the sampling, but it is possible that they are added afterwards because it is a live application that is constantly receiving uh, new data and information. Um, if that is a student that you are um, trying to resolve because of an order of rejection, you can submit um, a screenshot of the OSI RV application as a supporting document. For demographic errors, um, you will want to make sure that you're addressing those by the second certification. They need to be typically corrected in the LEA SIS, um, and then make sure that they're being sent correctly and upload and reflected correctly in the enrollment audit and child count application. Um, if you are having issues with that, make sure that there are no integration issues. And if you think this is a technical problem, submit an OST ticket. These elements all need to be resolved by November 14th at 4 p.m., the day before the second certification. Um, so if you're doing these steps above and it's still unable to fix it, make sure you submit an OST ticket. Um, if you do so by the 28th, there's a good chance that we can resolve it by the second certification. If you submit it afterwards, uh, you may have to follow the process for amending the second certification. For duplicative enrollments for the past two years, these have been resolved through a stand apart uh, application. Um, you want to make sure that you're reviewing the guidance for that and following those deadlines um, to make sure that you resolve those duplicative enrollments. Um, and if you don't uh, follow those deadlines, that could result in the LEA losing credit for that student in the enrollment audit. Um, Results from the duplicative enrollment audit are then updated in the enrollment audit application. So as you resolve them in the duplicative enrollment application at the at the conclusion of that application's timeline, those results will all be um, uploaded into the enrollment audit application for review by the second certification. So uh, coming up to the second certification, you're looking for a couple of things. You want to certify data elements are accurate and valid and complete. That would include demographic data from your LEA source system. That would also include your final child count numbers. So the second certification is not confirming residency status. OK, that is still an ongoing uh, issue that is being resolved um, in this process um, that would not be confirmed until the final certification. The second certification, just like the first and the third, needs to be completed by the head of school. Specifically on child count data and the second certification, it is important to remember that this information cannot be amended after the second certification. So whatever you certify uh, in the second certification for child count data is considered as is for the remainder of the enrollment audit. Um, we include in child count data students that were stage five enrolled as of October 5th, and the student data that determines whether they are included in child counts needs to stay in compliance with child count requirements up and to up to and through the second certification date. Um, some LEAs have had issues in the past where their child count data has changed between October 5th and the second certification, and then those students were not included in the second certification. So you really want to be conscious of your student data and making sure that those students are accurately accounted for. Final appeals. So if you have been following through the iterative process of reviewing residency documentation along with the auditor. So you've submitted it for e-file and gone through the initial documentation review. It was rejected and it was resubmitted for issue resolution and it was rejected again. Then you have one final chance to submit for a final appeal. To be eligible for a final appeal, again, you had to have participated through this process throughout and you'll have to have submitted your documentation by December 2nd. Um, and we're looking for compliant residency, residency documentation for review. So no blank documents, no documents that are clearly uh, not eligible for consideration as a supporting document. Make sure that you are submitting stuff that is in compliance with the OER, uh, the requirements outlined in the OER handbook. 
In addition, while you have until December 2nd, it's highly encouraged that you submit any uh, uh, changes to your documentation as early as possible after you receive the issue resolution rejection. That gives the auditor uh, time to review and accept or follow up if there are questions, which would then allow the LEA uh, to respond before that deadline in case they had submitted something by accident or incorrectly. Third certification. So this is the third certification is the last and final one, um, and your uh, the LEA is confirming the final audited enrollment numbers. Um, again, it's completed by the head of school, uh, and for this year it will be completed on December 15th. Reporting. So at the conclusion of the enrollment audit, OSI will spend time uh, making sure that the data has been um, submitted and correctly and reviewing it and compiling that into a report and supplemental data tables. That information will then be submitted to the DC Council and then eventually released publicly. Unverified residents. So at the conclusion of the audit, the LEA may have students who are enrolled um, and they were determined not to be um, uh, verified residents. So there was an issue with their residency documentation and the auditor had rejected them even through final appeal. So while the student may not be a verified as a bona fide DC resident in the final audited enrollment, the LEA is still responsible for resolving all residency errors. So if this student remains enrolled at your LEA, even though they were counted as an unverified resident during the enrollment audit, um, it is the LEA's responsibility responsibility to make sure that those uh, that residency verification is completed and compliant with all of the laws, regulations and requirements. Uh, a complete list of all of the steps the LEA can take and should take is in the Enrollment Audit and Child Count Handbook, uh, but in summary, they include providing notice to the enrolling person that they have not submitted compliant documentation. They will have an, a period to resolve that and uh, if they don't, then the LEA should require the enrolling person to consent to a home visit. If the home visit does not occur, then the LEA should move forward with withdrawing the student since they did not complete residency verification. And just to reiterate, this is not an OSI requirement, but a requirement by DC law and regulation. So it's the LEA's responsibility to ensure that they are enrolling DC residents. So when they are found to not be compliant with residency verification, it's the LEA's responsibility to either collect compliant documentation or remove the student from the school. Uh, OSI may follow up on any and all of these unverified residents at an LEA to confirm the completion of these steps. And I think that this is something that an LEA should be prepared to uh, respond to this year. So if you do have questions, this is a very, um, you know, a, 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 a somewhat thorough but general overview of the enrollment audit. Uh, if you have additional follow up questions, first check the enrollment audit and child count application or Enrollment Audit and Child Count Handbook, and there's a lot of detailed information in there, um, but you can also email us at aussie.enrollmentaudit at dc.gov.